Many individuals embark on spiritual practices with the hope of acquiring supernatural abilities, one of which is the opening of the third eye. Once this spiritual center is awakened, it is believed to bestow the gift of clairvoyance, granting the ability to perceive both past and future events and access a realm invisible to ordinary human eyes. The third eye has been intricately linked to the pineal gland, a critical component in human growth, development, sleep regulation, and immune function. Consequently, some propose that by activating the pineal gland, the full potential of the third eye can be realized. Additionally, because the pineal gland is situated in close proximity to the Tianmu acupoint in traditional Chinese medicine, there is a belief that acupuncture may be employed to stimulate this acupoint and facilitate the opening of the third eye. In contrast, within Buddhist teachings, the activation of the third eye is consistently associated with meditation rather than external stimulation. Buddhists possess a profound understanding of the phenomena that arise from the third eye's activation, which is categorized into five distinct levels, the physical eye, the heavenly eye, the wisdom eye, the dharma eye, and the buddha eye. Human vision of the physical eye is confined to a narrow band of electromagnetic radiation within an expansive spectrum. Visible light comprises wavelengths measured in nanometers, with longer wavelengths around 700 nanometers appearing as red to humans, and shorter wavelengths around 400 nanometers appearing as blue or violet. Wavelengths shorter than 400 nanometers fall into the ultraviolet range, which is not visible to normal humans. Our eyes possess a protective mechanism in the form of a lens with a yellowish tint, which filters out harmful ultraviolet light. Conversely, wavelengths beyond red are too long to form images on our irises, rendering anything beyond the infrared range invisible to us. Some individuals, particularly children, claim to perceive spiritual entities like ghosts, this is known as the yin-yang eye, allowing one to see energy that is imperceptible to the naked eye, but this is distinct from the heavenly eye. When ghosts endeavor to manifest themselves, they undergo a transition of their astral energy bodies into the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Initially, they emit radio waves, which may potentially disrupt radio or television transmissions, leading to verbal communications known as electronic voice phenomenon EVP. As they accumulate supernatural strength by absorbing environmental energy, ghosts emit microwave radiation, which can interfere with electronic devices. Consequently, they enter the infrared spectrum, where they become detectable by full-spectrum cameras capable of capturing images in both the infrared and ultraviolet ranges. Those individuals with the yin-yang eye are likely capable of perceiving phenomena within the infrared and ultraviolet ranges, thus enabling them to see ghosts when they manifest within this electromagnetic spectrum. Even for ordinary individuals lacking the ability to see ghosts, sightings of ghosts are more likely to occur in their peripheral vision, where rod cells are more active than cone cells. Rods are photoreceptor cells in the retina responsible for vision in low-light conditions. They are highly light-sensitive but do not perceive color, making them crucial for peripheral vision and motion detection. Cones, on the other hand, are responsible for color vision in high-acuity tasks, primarily sensitive to different wavelengths of light, allowing us to perceive a range of colors. Cones are primarily concentrated in the central region of the retina, responsible for detailed and central vision. The sensitivity disparities between rods and cones partly explain why ghost sightings are often associated with peripheral vision. Since rods are more abundant in the outer regions of the retina, they are more likely to detect faint stimuli or subtle movements associated with ghosts. Recent research has revealed that certain animals, such as dogs and cats, permit a significant amount of ultraviolet light into their eyes. For example, when testing dogs' eyes, researchers found that over 61% of UV light passes through and reaches the photosensitive receptors in the retina. This suggests that dogs can likely see into the ultraviolet range, potentially explaining their ability to see ghosts. Compared to most animals, humans can only perceive a very narrow range of the overall electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Beyond the physical eye, an yin-yang eye, lies the heavenly eye, associated with demigods and gods but available to humans who are spiritually evolved. 
An individual with heavenly eye can perceive objects regardless of distance, size, direction, or time of day. The heavenly eye is not necessarily confined to the pineal gland in the forehead or any specific physical location, it can manifest anywhere in the body. Some may experience it in the temple, on the top of the head, at the back of the head, in the palms, under the feet, or in the armpits. These specific spots are not used for viewing but rather act as receivers of energies. The actual process of visual perception occurs within the brain, much like watching a television screen that presents images without necessarily providing a context for what is being observed. Consequently, individuals possessing the heavenly eye must still interpret what they see, thereby introducing the possibility of error. The heavenly eye consists of four abilities, internal vision, penetrative vision, remote vision, and microvision. Internal vision allows introspection into one's own body, including organs and bones. Penetrative vision permits viewing the interior of physical objects, such as seeing through a person's body or a wall to perceive the inside of a room. Microvision enables the observation of the microcosmic world, magnifying things that are normally invisible even with a microscope. Remote vision allows the perception of distant objects, regardless of their distance. It's important to emphasize that possessing the heavenly eye does not necessarily indicate a person's level of spiritual awakening. Each individual's spiritual journey is unique, and the specific abilities acquired through practice can vary. True ultimate realization is only attained when one reaches the Buddha eye, otherwise, there exists a wide spectrum of abilities whilst cultivating. Progressing further, we encounter the wisdom eye. While the heavenly eye provides raw data without interpretation, the wisdom eye offers a mental understanding of what is seen. It encompasses four related functions, multiple perspectives, analytical insight, backtracking, and foresight. The multiple perspectives function of the wisdom eye enables one to view objects from the perspectives of various people involved with the object, providing a deeper understanding of its nature. Analytical insight involves comprehending the object's nature and function. Backtracking and foresight allow one to perceive information from the past and future of an object. Every phenomenon emits informational signals from its inception to its eventual dissolution, which is processed through the body's intelligence to provide both visual images and informational content. All past, present, and future happens in the eternal now, therefore all the informational content of an object already exists and can be accessed by individuals with the wisdom eye. If someone with the wisdom eye were to observe an archaeological ruin, they would have the ability to see it from the perspectives of both a tourist as well as an archaeologist, multiple perspective, understand the nature and function of the ruin without relying on documented history, analytical insight, observe how it was constructed, who built it, and its past inhabitants, backtracking, as well as foresee its future, foresight. As one develops the wisdom eye, a realization of emptiness accompanies it, since emptiness is the true essence of all things. To comprehend the concept of emptiness, consider the scenario where you remove your head from your body. Would the head constitute the entirety of yourself? The answer is no, it is merely your head. Extend this perspective to your arm, and you'll find that it, too, does not define your entire self, it's simply your arm. As you continue to dismantle every part of your body, you come to the profound realization that none of these individual components can be rightfully called the self. Furthermore, once each part has been separated, the question arises, where does the self reside? It is at this point that Buddha draws the conclusion that not only is the physical body empty, but the very concept of self is also empty. For an individual who has attained a realization of emptiness and developed the wisdom eye, not solely through rational comprehension but through a profound experiential understanding, we refer to this person as an arhat. Moving onward, we encounter the Dharma Eye. Building upon the Wisdom Eye, the Dharma Eye empowers individuals not only to perceive the essence of things but also to transform it. For instance, they can cut a steel rod with a mere gaze or restore broken objects to their original state. The state of the Dharma Eye is associated with the Bodhisattva. While in the Heavenly Eye, individuals remain attached to form as they can perceive things beyond the scope of the physical eye, 
such as divine beings and extraterrestrial worlds. In the wisdom I, attachment to the concept of emptiness, which is the essence of all things, is prevalent. However, for an individual with Dharma eyes, attachment to both form and non-form is transcended, and a harmonious integration of both perspectives occurs. This integration leads to the emergence of natural compassion, which motivates the individual to assist beings who are essentially empty but still attached to their forms. The Dharma eyes perceive emptiness while simultaneously understanding the perspective of the beings before them who may not yet grasp this concept. A story can effectively illustrate the concepts of the heavenly eye, wisdom eye, and Dharma eye, once, there was a couple who constantly found themselves in conflict. Their arguments were frequent and intense, leaving both the husband and wife feeling upset, angry, and frustrated. However, they had heard about the five eyes. One day, as they began to quarrel, both husband and wife were on the verge of not speaking to each other for days again. Suddenly, the husband remarked, I am using my heavenly eye now. All I see is a skeleton. Why should I argue with a mere skeleton? The wife fell silent for a moment, then burst into laughter. Perplexed, the husband inquired, what's so amusing? The wife replied, I am using my wisdom eye, and you vanished. There is nothing here to disturb me anymore. With a newfound perspective, they both shared a laugh and concluded, let us now employ our Dharma eyes. We are all manifestations, and though we may have our differences, let us choose to live together happily in this realm. The highest level among the five eyes is the Buddha eye. In this state, one attains omniscience, possessing complete knowledge of all things across space and time, omnipresence, the ability to be in all space and time simultaneously, and omnipotence, the ability to influence everything across all space and time. When discussing the first four types of eyes, there was always a clear distinction between subject and object. For instance, with the physical eye, the subject is a human being, and the object is worldly phenomena. In the case of the heavenly eye, the god serves as the subject, while the vast realms of space are the object. With the wisdom eye, the arhat is the subject, and emptiness is the object. In the context of the dharma eye, the bodhisattva acts as the subject, while the universe's many realms are the objects of perception. However, when we talk about the Buddha eye, it would be inaccurate to claim that the Buddha is the subject, and the universe is the object. This distinction no longer holds, for when one possesses the Buddha eye, the Buddha and the universe have merged as one. The Buddha is the universe, and the universe is the Buddha. It is equally inappropriate to state that the Buddha possesses the Buddha eye because in this state, there is no separation between the Buddha eye and the Buddha itself. The Buddha eye is the Buddha, and the Buddha is the Buddha eye. All dualities cease to exist. In a similar manner, since the one who possesses the Buddha eyes is also time and space, they exist in all dimensions of time and space simultaneously. They can perceive everything within that space-time continuum and, through mere thought, instantly choose to be present at any specific point within it. Since everything within the universe is Buddha, and Buddha is everything, it can also thus influence it. 